Welcome everyone to the forum on our Black Lives Matter exhibit curated by Elijah Grant Pereira, Caroline Fraze, Sophie Stark, Lauren Jones, Olivia Busco, Tom Powell, Clara Abreu, and me. We're so glad to have everyone here and to begin, I'll be reading the introduction written for our exhibition, Black Lives Matter, A Black Lens. It started as a hashtag to promote justice for Trayvon Martin, a black teenager who was murdered in Sanford, Florida. Black Lives Matter has blossomed into a global social movement that is committed to combating racially motivated violence and police brutality. Black Lives Matter organizes protests that aim for the legal accountability of people who commit racial violence and drafts policy solutions to prevent future acts. Recently, the murder of George Floyd at the hands of Derek Chauvin, a white police officer from Minneapolis, has sparked international outrage. Protests erupted across the United States calling for the arrests of the four officers involved, including Thomas Lane, Shay Alexander Kwong, and Do Chow. Issues of police brutality and racially charged violence were evident long before the death of Trayvon Martin in 2012. Recent events, including the murders of Breonna Taylor and Ahmaud Arbery, have pushed many to take to the streets to demand reform or abolition of the police and the arrest of all persons responsible for the deaths perpetrated against the Black community. In June 2020, a group of eight Millbrook students gathered to create this exhibition. We began our work by reading a National Geographic article on photojournalism and the power of a single image to shape the story of this movement. We expanded our research to other articles and videos and saw a need to project Black voices telling the story of these protests through the eyes and feelings of Black men and women. Curatorial team members used the Hire Black Photographers hashtag and website to review images of the protests created by Black photographers. They carefully selected every photograph deciding which ones would communicate the essence of and diversity within Black Lives Matter protests. Individually, everyone wrote didactics for their chosen photos. A variety of styles exist within this exhibition. Some didactics examine the technical aspects of the photo, others share the original Instagram captions, and still others offer lines from poems. Hosting this exhibition at our school demonstrates the power of young voices and leadership. This generation and its quest for a just America will not be sought by tyrannical leaders nor resistant peers. We will instead thrive amid the undeniable need for change. The Black Lives Matter, a Black Lens Photography Exhibition showcases the work of Black photographers during the 2020 Black Lives Matter movement. The exhibition compiles 18 photos from various African-American photographers throughout the United States. These artists include Lindsay Weatherspoons, Raylene Fines, Adrian White, Sarah Coxae, Daryl Hunter, Jean Sherry, Dee Dwyer, and Sheila Prebright. We started the curation process by learning about photojournalism. We learned how to analyze photos using both a conceptual analysis and a formal analysis. And we also discussed the ethical aspect of photojournalism. We researched common editing tactics that people may use to create a different narrative and how to know when you've crossed the line of misleading. From this process, we learned much more about the power of photos and the messages that they can convey. After gaining this base knowledge, we went on to selecting the different photos we would use in the exhibit. As we selected the photos, we analyzed the story each photo told, the perceptions of those we had never met that began to develop in our minds, and we thought of how these photos would be perceived by others. To find the photos, we used the website, hashtag hire black photographers. This website provided a lengthy list of black photographers and showed whether or not they had taken photos of the 2020 Black Lives Matter protests. We chose to use this resource because we feel that it's important to give those who have shared experiences and a closer perspective to a certain issue, both a platform to express themselves and a prioritized voice when discussing these matters. So why? Why bring this exhibition to campus? Well, first of all, it was kind of impossible for this movement, this issue to not have some way impacted you over the summer. Whether you attended a protest or just scrolling through Instagram, swiping past the endless posts regarding the Black Lives Matter movement. We all share different opinions regarding this issue and it would be a true disservice to the community to not bring this amazing conversation to campus. We'd also like to note that not very often do we get to have these complex conversations through art. 
a different level of empathy and understanding tends to be produced through viewing and analyzing artwork. And that may be the main purpose of the exhibit, to gain a better understanding of each other's experiences and perspective. We don't think and we're not hoping for total uniformity in thought, but rather that this exhibition creates discussion and again, produces empathy. From this process, we can, come, we can become a better and more united community. Now we're gonna move into the images. Each of us has chosen one image and it's didactic to share with you. Um, this man stung, stands in front of a monument that honors Robert E. Lee, a Confederate general and slaver. His statue stands in Lee Circle in Richmond, Virginia, and recently has been renamed by protesters to Marcus David Peters Circle in remembrance of Marcus David Peters, a black man who lost his life in 2018 when he was shot by a police officer. Across the country, there's been a movement to take down statues that honor racist and hateful historical figures. Some argue that by removing the statues, you're attempting to raise the past. Some argue that to continue to honor the figures um, is, to be, is disrespectful and should be taken down immediately. Still others say that the statues should be kept up and should be defaced and graffitied, and they should remain as a reminder. A woman wears a mask with the to the point text, stop killing us, printed on it. Her expression is calm and serious, showing that it is time for change. This image also shows the entanglement of these protests with the coronavirus pandemic, which both complicates, it, complicates and exaggerates these in, in, injustices. Um, this photo was taken by John Cherry. Police surround protesters in Louisville. The artist, John Cherry, speaks about his work in this way. A photograph should be able to tell a story and invoke a reaction. The dark exposure together with the haze, presumably from the tear gas, creates a sense of grief. The story that is told here is one of community and standing together in solidarity for an essential cause. Protests are not only times to call for change, but also times to learn and reflect. In the age of information, claiming to be uneducated is not an adequate justification for staying out of it. In this photo, a woman is speaking into a megaphone. Although we do not know what she is saying, it is clearly powerful. Everyone seems to be a trans by her message. Black Lives Matter demands the attention of everyone capable of pursuing change. While this movement is all about influencing people to become empowered, it is important to show that these are deeply sad times as a result of tragedy. Pursuing social justices reveals our vulnerabilities and allows us to show intense grief. Feeling empowered and influencing others to be empowered does not always coincide with the constant radius of happiness. Happiness instead relies on the constant hope of justice. This is an excerpt from Imagine the Face by Alice Connolly Nagel. Imagine the face of someone you love posted onto his body. Imagine a public and torturous death. It makes me think of the Christ of my childhood, a nailed man we were asked to study hanging from a cross. Imagine so that we would understand him as God, but also a human, a son. This photo was taken by D. Dwyer. We are nonviolent with people who are nonviolent with us, by Malcolm X. A young protester le leads an uplifting chant for protesters. In the midst of the COVID-19 pandemic, protesters march to the White House for the death of George Floyd, who was murdered by the Minneapolis police officer, Derek Chauvin. Here we see a woman overcome with emotion, crying and holding a candle with her head tilted toward the ground. Surrounding her are others who follow suit. While the Black Lives Matter movement and the protests that have followed have been empowering to the African-American community, we must not forget that it is a movement born from grief. Only in the presence of unity 
has it provided a voice to the voiceless? This image I selected was taken by Sara Koksai um, during a protest in Minneapolis. It is tradition to prevent the American flag from touching the ground. In the rain, it must be protected. During the darkest of nights, a light must always be shown towards it. In the mornings, school children face the flag with their hands on their hearts to pledge their allegiance. Does the American flag stand for a country riddled with hatred from a toxic past? Does it stand for a country that teaches humans to fear their neighbors rather than showing them empathy? Does the flag stand for a new era where reform comes from every breath, step, and chant? Will we finally join together to be a progressive, modern generation? Do you pledge allegiance? Hi, everybody. So now Lindsay and I are going to conduct an interview, or more, I'm going to conduct an interview with her. So I think I'm just going to let her know that she can get in. I wonder. One second. Hi. <laughs> Thank you for being here, first of all. I'm delighted to introduce. Lindsay Weatherspoon, one of the artists who is featured in the Black Lives Matter exhibit right now in the gallery. If you will, I slid into her DMs a few months ago. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, and ever since then, I have been grateful for her contributions to the show. Lindsay was recently featured in the New York Times, as well as other great outlets, and is based in Atlanta, Georgia, and Birmingham, Alabama. I want to express my own gratitude and gratitude from our team to you for participating in this forum and in our exhibition. It's been an honor. Additionally, for everybody else, all the students and faculty who are listening right now, please feel free to put any questions for Lindsay or I in the chat and Elijah and Ali are going to sift through them and give them to us at the end to talk about. Awesome. Thank you so much. I, I am um, so grateful to be here and you know just to have the opportunity to to talk to a different um audience you know there's one thing to talk to my own peers whether they're photographers or you know want to be adults like me <laughs> but you know it's another thing to to see what the future holds and the the fact that you all took the time to not only create this gallery but to do your homework. Um, I think that is a, a, a lost art these days, especially not only for doing your homework about the people, but just about um, some of the, the systemic issues going along with racism, sexism, just everything that's going on in the world. So I, I definitely give my kudos to you all. Um, mm -hmm. And I actually know a couple of the, the other artists that, that's in the show. Sheila, um, she lives here in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. And Dee, um, I talk to her pretty frequently, so it's, it's good to see like some, some some familiar faces in the group as well. Yeah, I didn't know that that's really good to know. That's yeah. fun tidbit. <laughs> so for the first question, I'd like to hear about your experience photographing the protests. What was that like? And maybe if you could let the audience know where you were based in these two photos that we took or that you took that were yeah. sure, sure, sure. Um, well, just to give you all a little bit more. Um, you know, about my background. I um, I originally went to college to become um, a news anchor. So I, I worked at a news station back at home in Birmingham, Alabama for about two years. Um, I also was a an adjunct professor. I taught public speaking, um, which allowed me to move to Atlanta to find another job. But then um, I realized I wanted to do more. So I left my teaching job to do photography full time. And I honestly just haven't, I haven't looked back. It's, it's been an experience where um, you know where you want to be, but you have to grow to get to that point. Um, so to answer your question, Clara, um, to photograph 
the 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 Black Lives Matter movement in Atlanta, um, I feel like it is a different tone compared to other cities, and I'm going to explain why. Um, mm. un- understanding that in the South, where you hear more about, you know, um, you hear how people were enslaved, and you hear about um, Jim Crow laws, you hear about um, those who were enslaved picking cotton in certain states and things of that nature. When you think about those stories, it wasn't that far, you know, ago. So knowing kind of like what your past looked like to understand that, unfortunately, some of those things have follow us, followed us to this day is is rather unfortunate. Um, and, you know, it, it's it's as part of the South, <laughs> we we like to say that we we may not be blatant with our racism, but there is definitely racism here. And we, being in a, in a space where we are known for our civil rights movements and still have some of those leaders that are around, it just felt like we were one of those cities that had to galvanize behind, you know, the, the Black Lives Matter movement. So to be in those those scenarios and, and to see um, some of those things, you know, the, the pain, the the pride in being Black and things of that nature, you know, you saw different storylines depending on what day that you were at some of those protests. So, you know, coming from one extremely historic city such as Birmingham, Alabama to another one, which is Atlanta, Georgia, of course, where Martin Luther King and so many other civil rights member, uh, leaders either lived or came to visit. I don't know. It's just, it's, it's, it was the vibe that was different. The energy was extremely different. You know, it, even though George Floyd, you know, rest his soul, was not killed here, it felt like he was one of our own. So mm-hmm. it made sense for us to get in the streets and, and make our voice heard. It's a very powerful answer. Thank you. You know, I didn't get to be at those protests in Atlanta. Yeah. But those photos really captured a lot of that essence that you just explained to us. Yeah. So, you know, based on those two photos, if, I'm not sure if we can project them, but they are the two that are in the gallery diagonal to one another. Mm-hmm. One is a man with his hands up and the other is of the police line facing him. Do you think you could tell us the story behind those two images or behind the shots, if you will? Yeah, sure, sure, sure. So um, um, let, me, let me say this, because I want to say, and I want to ask first, the, the poem that, that went along with the... the, the um, guy with his hands up. Was that written by one of the students or is that somebody else? That was by a poet. I found this on the Poetry Foundation. Yeah. Okay. I was like, that is, it was, it was really moving and very fitting. So I'm like, again, I, I, you all are definitely a future I look forward to because you are, are already so empathetic to the things that are going on right now. So I, I really do appreciate the words being connected to the photo because in that moment, as I was photographing, um, well, making that photo, I looked at the young man as my very own, whether my very own fa- um, family member, my cousin, I don't have any siblings, but if I did, my very own brother, or you know, whoever, a, a good friend, whoever, just a, a very, a, a, somebody on the street, you, you care about these people so much. But if you notice in the in the background, and I'm 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 hoping that you all had this conversation around the photo, but if you look in the background, there is a um, a guy that is taking a picture. He has a camera to his face, has on, has on a nice hat. Mm-hmm. Um, if you if you read it the way that I meant to take the photo, it's a black man where there's a white man behind him taking a photo. Thank you so much. <laughs> There's, um, if you see in the background, yes, just right behind them, you see somebody else with the camera on, has his gas mask and has a hat on. Um, after that photo was taken, the white photographer behind him told me to get out of his shot. And, you know, being in such an active moment, as you can see, you have the, the police line. This is going on behind me. The police line is going on behind me as I'm taking a photo of the guy that's on his knees with his hands up. And in that moment, it it we as photographers have this this thing where we know that certain photographers are only out at 
protests for awards. So maybe a Pulitzer, some type of other news organization reward, award. We know these things. And so that is why, and I'm glad you all po- um, made this point, why we have groups like Di- Diversify Photo, which I'm a member of, a proud member of, mm-hmm. um, who made the hashtag of hire black photographers. Because in an instance, I'm not looking for any reward or award for documenting something that is true. So I'm not trying to make art out of what life is for this black man or for me or the police officers or the other black, I mean, or the other photographer in the background. It's just this, this space where there has to be honest stories, honest journalism with such a critical time as this. And you know, to, to have made that photo and to have to tell that story, it honestly upsets me because I, I, can, I will never understand why someone would feel like they have to take advantage of such a vulnerable moment. So that, that's the story behind that particular photo. But to the police line in itself, they were, they were just ready for anything that was going to happen. And you can tell either by their tactical moves or you can just you can just feel when it's time to leave. And I left about 10 or 15 minutes after being in the midst of everything. And as I'm walking to my car, I hear them throwing um, the uh, pepper spray. You hear it going off. And, you know, for, for, for a while, at times I felt, and this is my first time saying this, at times I felt bad Mm -hmm. for leaving before the activity, but then I realized that is how we are all desensitized from what's going on right now. And I have to be honest, like my safety comes first instead of being, you know, in this predicament as as far as these two photos go. I was between these two groups. Imagine you have the police that's behind you. You see these moments of protesters and the police and you're right in between. Um, it's a lot of emotions that, that can come out of that. A lot of, um, a lot of things can stir up in you, whether it's going to be a bit of frustration, anxiety, anger, happiness, because you see so much blackness that's celebrating life. And at the same time, we know that something could actually happen during that moment. And it did. And, um, I'm just glad to say that I wasn't there to see what happened. Thank you for sharing that you know I didn't know the full story I had read the Instagram caption and we mentioned that uh, in our curatorial group about the story and as I was choosing the poem I wanted to incorporate that is such a powerful moment yet you were literally in the middle of two opposite sides that's incredible I think you really captured that beautifully in these photos are so powerful and I've had a lot of individuals come up to me like these two photos like wow I, I hadn't looked at the other one and it completely changed my mind like pretty I was still looking at them. There's details that you notice every time. They're beautiful photographs. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And, and, and I'm, you know, when this particular moment, um, was I on assignment? I feel like I was on assignment. But even if I wasn't, whenever I'm telling anyone's story, I'm, I'm always, I try to be as fair and as balanced as I possibly can. You know, going along with the information that I may get from someone that I've either interviewed or interacting with. Um, and I also think that when people feel your energy as someone who wants to know more about you, they kind of loosen up. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, if, even if I was not on, on assignment, I would still tell the same story. This is what happened. This is what it looked like. Matter of fact, this is what it smelled like that day, you know, just so that you all have some type of sense, sense and some type of, you know, whatever your memory is about a, a particular time. I want you all to feel it just, just like I felt it. Maybe not all of it, but just a little bit at a time. Yeah, that, that's so interesting. I'm just thinking about how, you know, just the sense of like sight, how that is capturing so much in this. And like, it almost feels like you can feel that adrenaline rushing through you of these photographs. Or, mm-hmm, like, mm-hmm. And I think only took as far as the, the, um, the, the, the first photo with the, his hands up, I want to say I only got about, three or four frames and then I left. I took his picture, turned around, and then I got out of the way because it was it was too much going on. So <laughs> yeah. um so for the third question. Yeah. Interesting. Different realm, but 
What are your thoughts about the relationship between photographs or any art in general and justice? Slash, what role can art play in initiating social change? Hmm. Interesting. <laughs> a very good question. Um, yes, I think that any form of art is is a voice for those who, you know, even for me, I'm not the best writer. At times, I also don't think that I'm the best speaker, but my photos can say whatever I've tried to say, but just can't get the right words. So art as a form of activism is just as powerful. Um, whether it's going to be a photograph, is going to be um, a painting, a, a graphic for all we know, it, it definitely brings about the a much more colorful version of what we want justice to look like. Even if you think about, um, who was it? Was it Shepherd Fairy? Um, we did the, was it Shepherd Fairy that did the Hope um, photos for mm -hmm. President Obama? I believe it was. I could be completely wrong. But either way, the, the photos and the, the graphics itself, you remember that. You remember when you saw it, what it was for and its purpose. So the same thing goes for photographs. If I'm taking a particular photograph, I told you the story behind it. And even if you see it five, 10, 20 years later, it was there for a purpose. Mm -hmm. It made you think, and even the gallery that you all have, mm -hmm. it made you stop, think, and you are going to, you may not realize it, but you may reference that same photo in the moment of Black Lives Matter or I pray that there's nothing else, but if something happens in the future, it will still be relevant. So understanding that the impact of the photo of, of a photograph mm -hmm. is going to be something that's going to be helpful, not only to tell the story, but to be much more impactful when there's a time that we need to make change. So, so yeah, definitely photos are definitely going to be um, relevant, but because let's, let's also be honest, some of us may not want to read anything long about making change. We want to see something that is right in front of us that says, you know what? I can do that. I can be just as impactful in whatever that cert that situation looks like. So I, I think whether you are the, the photo maker or, or the person that's viewing the photo, there is importance in, in that, um, in that image. Yeah. We're giving us some quotes today to check <laughs> speaking right now I'm like taking this all in like a sponge right now <laughs> I'm enjoying this I really I really am it's, it's refreshing again to talk to a different group mm -hmm. um, and, and, and I can't reiterate this enough mm -hmm. you all are definitely the ones that once we're just too old to do this you're gonna have to take it up you're gonna have to take take that um that um <laughs> yeah, you're gonna need that stick <laughs> to to lead us to that to that next um yeah. next wave of and a more um empathetic mm -hmm. world. It's gonna be on y'all because there's only so much that we can do. Yeah. You know, I'm I'm 36, so my generation we are doing things, but we are expecting you all to take the rest of it. I know it's I know it's a heavy load, <laughs> but you know. <laughs> Gotta get lifting. Yeah. yeah it's really great that our school is giving us this opportunity and the fact that we have like 311 yeah. people here listening. Yeah. I, I appreciate you all being here on a Friday. You could have been anywhere else, but you're here with us. Yeah. <laughs> so, speaking of young people, segue, yeah. number four, what have you seen young people, artists, and not do to support racial justice recently? Besides hmm. our exhibit, which is Claps for Us. But yeah. like, <laughs> this possibly. You know, one of the most um, impactful, a few things that I've seen, mm -hmm. and this was early on when uh, protests began. And forgive me for not knowing um, the, these young folks' names, but to organize protests or marches through Twitter and have hundreds, if not thousands of people to show up, you used the mechanism that you knew best how to use in order to reach the masses, 
because you knew that you had a greater purpose to see some type of change start. I don't care how old you are. Um, you can do something if you want. And even if it's not in the, in the fact, in the, in the, in the way of organizing the protest, if you are talking to your friends about, Hey, what do you think about this situation that happened? You know, how can we break down the things that we understand? And also how can we break those down to what can we change? Mm -hmm. Um, Conversations are, 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 are crucial whether it's among your friends, whether it's among um, some of your teachers, mm-hmm. uh, whether it's even with your family, you know, the, they, all conversations are hard. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm pretty sure you all, you all don't have problem asking for money from your parents, but you need to have those same conversation, those harder conversations about what is life right now? What, why are these things happening? Has this happened before? Will they happen again? And if, we want to see them change. How can we affect that change on, on folks? So I, I, I think gathering people yep. and having conversations mm-hmm. um, around the idea of what does change look like for mm-hmm. you? Because my change in the world may look completely different, <laughs> but what does it look like for mm-hmm. you all as a group or you know whatever um, the different uh, ethnic ethnic identities that are at, at your school or within mm-hmm. yourself, what does that look like? Because me as a black woman that lives in the South, mm-hmm. my idea of change may look completely different to where you are in Boston, you know? So mm-hmm. how can we change little by little at a time in order to where we may have a greater understanding of who we are as not only people, but as humans in the world, you know, I don't want to like, sh- you know, sugarcoat it or downplay that. Unfortunately, there is an issue between black and white and others, whatever that looks like. But when you, when you start to understand, and especially now in the unfortunate time of a pandemic, that all of us have a greater mission in this world to do better by each other I just hope and I really, really hope that there is some understanding, you know, some true groundwork being done that we can all just have better conversations, better empathy towards each other. Wow. Yet another great point. <laughs> we, I guess as we're waiting for some students and everybody yeah, sure, sure. Students in the chat, I want to ask you what is next for you However you want to answer that career person, I'm not sure. <laughs> well, for, for me, um, as as Miss um, McWright was saying, um, I was recently named as a Canon Explorer of Light. So that basically means that I'm an ambassador for the camera brand that I use. So I, I honestly, this this all happened yesterday. So I don't know what's next as far as, not even work. I do know right now I am in the, we're in the election season. So I'll be covering a lot of news around, um, you know, polling and um, whatever else that, that happens either uh, during early voting or um, on actual election day. But I do have a, 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 a personal project that I've been working on for, for a few years. It's about the Gullah Geechee culture. And I encourage you all to, um, to research them. They are um, a group of enslaved um, West Africans who were brought to the um, Eastern shore states of South Carolina, um, also Georgia and Florida. Uh, They have their own language. They have their own, um, they are, they were known for um, harvesting rice. so many things. I, 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 I think you all would find that story rather relevant. And what I've been photographing are just descendants of the culture. Um, so it's been, it's been an amazing venture to hear different stories about how they, how, you know, they still live off their land, just like the Gullah and Geechee mm-hmm. cultures um, from, from when they were brought to America. So, you know, just, just understanding 
that you can still, tr you can try your best to find good ways to highlight what may have happened in the past, but don't ever forget, you know, start off, be honest with the story and keep it, you know, keep it as current as possible. So yeah, I I, I may do some other things. I, I, I would love to do more work that, um, mm -hmm. that is not commissioned by somebody else because of course I, I will do a lot of work for New York Times, NPR, Wall Street Journal and folks like that. So, you know, once once things slow down for me, I definitely will be thinking about more of my own personal projects. Great. Thank you. We are okay. <laughs> about any questions from students, everybody listening, if you can I think we can go ahead and raise our hands if we have any questions. If not, I also know we're having a dorm discussion if we feel gotcha. more comfortable. But there is one person asking a question. Gotcha. Let's read okay. out loud. Gotcha. I want to ask if being paid to do photography has changed your passion of taking pictures. Do you find it as more of an obligation or still something you love to do? Ah, that is an excellent question, Olivia. Um, I love what I do. The money has not changed um how i feel about it because i didn't <clears throat> i didn't originally start off as a photojournalist i was a wedding and family photographer and i transitioned out of that around 2014 just to focus more on um news publications and also magazines and advertising work so um no, I, m my mind is always wrapped around photography and I, I take pictures without being prompted. So I, I, I wouldn't give up anything that I've done or what I'm doing. Um, it's still a passion for me. Okay. <laughs> so, um, hmm. so money is not the motive. That is one takeaway. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it'll never it'll never take away from how much I love it. I was I've been taking pictures since high school, but as far as professionally, this is my this is my um twelfth year as a professional photographer. Yeah. All your dreams. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so we have three more questions so far from ooh, four. Let's go for okay. number <laughs> from Mr. Stewart. How do you respond to people who push back on the BLM movement or claim that protesting is not the solution? Mm. So thankfully I don't have those type of conversations often. Um, I feel like I keep a, a really good circle of people around me, even those that, even those folks that I meet just on other assignments, if the topic comes up, um, it'll come up and, and to be honest, Clara, and to also to, she said, is, is Pat Stewart a teacher or a student? Uh, yeah, Mr. Stewart is a teacher. Okay. Mr. Stewart. All right. <laughs> so, you know, to answer your question, Mr. Stewart, um, I have to be very neutral in situations. Um, especially if it comes up with someone that I'm photographing for a publication, just mm -hmm. for obvious reasons as a photojournalist. So I'm I'm open to hearing what people have to say about Black Lives Matter, but if it's just a one-on-one -on -one conversation, we are having those moments where we, at times, we may have to agree to disagree. Mm -hmm. So if there is pushback, um, I understand where you are, you understand where I am. And if that is where the drawing line is for us, where we may not communicate, I'm honestly okay with that because I know where I stand as a black person that lives in this country. So, um, and of course you, you hear the, the generic argument about um, riots and protesting and things of that nature. Um, things could be worse. And I'm just glad that no one is hurting anybody. If anything, you can save a building, but you can't save a life. And that is the that is the mindset that I have about any destruction that's done. Do I condone it? No. Yet, just don't get hurt. Mm -hmm. you know, whatever you, whatever way that you show your frustration, I can't tell you how to show that. That's completely up to you. But just don't hurt anybody. Okay. That's all I ask. 
Yeah. That's a great ask. <laughs> <laughs> just don't hurt anybody. This one, don't hurt people. <laughs> right, just um, don't. It's, it's not good. I mean, it, it's you don't want to cause frustration where there's already anger. So, again, uh, allow your anger to be as big and broad as you want. Just don't hurt anybody. I want to go. So now we have multiple questions to see. <laughs> I think I'm just going to go through the list randomly. Yeah, so sure. Sure, sure. Of course, your question is more important. They are all equally important. <laughs> so um, one person asked, have oh. you heard or seen anything about the photo that the man in the background of your photo took? Maybe she's referring to the photo with the man with his hands with up. His hands up. Yeah. Yeah. Who is taking his shot, as he said. Okay, we're, I'm looking at the questions as well. Who who asked that? Merrily, while asked this question to all. Okay. Yep. Um. First of all, you're welcome, Mr. Stewart. Um. I think we actually skipped one, Claire. As I said, when did you begin to pursue and try to make change in the um Black Lives Matter movement by Alexander? You can go in with that one, please. Yep. Okay. Sure. Yeah. So Alexander, um, I want to make sure that I I um answer your question correctly. Is it when did I begin to pursue photography or when did I begin to pursue photography in the sense of Black Lives Matter? Mm. And I will definitely answer. Your Maybe we should wait for him to give yeah. a response as we can go to the next one. Sure, okay. We'll go to Mary Lisa. Have you seen her anything about the photo that the man in the background of your photo took? Um, I haven't. Um, and I feel like he was identified. Um, mm -hmm. I don't. Um, I don't know the photographer. Um, I know that he and I had some choice words for each other because I told him you can't say stuff. I didn't say the word stuff, but you can't say stuff like that in an active moment. And you know, try to take advantage of somebody's vulnerability or emotions without them seeing it. So mm -hmm. it it was, it was just one of those moments where I was already heated by everything else that was going on, but that one really was the cherry on top. Um, but yeah, I, I have not heard or seen anything else about the photo. The, the story caught on pretty much and it, 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 it went, um, a lot of places, well, not a lot of places, but mostly on Instagram. But um, matter of fact, I do need to go back and save those the the photos, um, set, save the IG story, so that way you all can get a full context of what that photo actually meant. So, um, so yeah, I hope that answers your question, Mary Lee. And I see Alexander answered um, as far as Black Lives Matter go. Okay, gotcha. So l let me take a step back. When I started photography, um, my whole idea behind my career was to document black lives um outside of the scope of violence out of um economic status just black people in our wholeness That's so i feel like i along with you know the photographers who are in your in the in the current gallery right now we've all been doing work that would be considered that would be considered to be connected to Black Lives Matter. What I mean by that is, is that we've always known this. So we've always been accustomed to photographing what we know best. And so photographing our community is part of our revolution um, and part of Black Lives Matter. So yeah, I feel like I've, we've always, I can't speak for anybody else, but I can speak for myself that I've always been shooting or or photographing what can be considered black lives matter mm -hmm. I hope that made sense so my thing we have question i think between one and two more questions would you yeah. like to just choose your favorite i mean favorite i don't know one that inspires you through the from the zoom webinar chat and then you can answer yeah. and I, I can probably answer one two, two at one time so how'd you start oh, retirement wow. career Okay, what advice you give someone who wants to pursue photography? Okay, I can take both of these at the same time. So, um, Nashley, I hope I'm pronouncing your, your name correctly, and Estella. So I'm gonna answer your two questions together. Um, 
I started off for I started my photography career um, two years out of college, and I started off um, taking pictures at weddings and um, and family photos. But I feel like that was proper preparation to what I photograph now, because essentially I am still documenting lives just in my own way without any direction. It's what I see, what I hear, what I feel. I get to know people before I actually start, before I take my camera out. We're going to have a conversation because um, your story matters. So, and if, you, if you've already expressed to me that um, you feel awkward taking photos, we're not going to do that first. Let's talk to each other. Let's get a feeling for who each other, um, who each of us are. So that's what I do. Uh, as far as the advice I would give someone who wants to pursue pursue photography as a career excuse me um it depends on what type of photography you want to pursue i will say that the the entering into this this field just like any is not easy it's going to take practice it's going to take patience and also trusting your personal journey as a photographer um, as I just said, I didn't start off as a photojournalist, though I went to school for it. That wasn't where I started. You, sometimes you're often going to start in places that you don't want to necessarily be in for the rest of your life, or you don't see yourself being in for the rest of the rest of your life, but take whatever lesson you can from that, that opportunity and then grow from it as not only for a photographer, but as a person. So take those lessons from the jobs that you have in your life as a foundation for where you want to be. I hope I really answered your question. Let me, Ms. Macri, do we have time for one more question? Sure. Let me see. I think so. We're good. Yes, maybe. I think we can take one more question. You can. Okay. Sure, I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy too. <laughs> I think we're good. I, I think one more question I would love to answer it. It says from, from um, Ugo. Mm -hmm. Again, I really hope I'm, I'm pronouncing everyone's name correctly because that, yeah. yes. <laughs> so I get the question, why don't um, BLM address black on black crime? I feel like I never really have a concrete answer for it. How would you approach that question? You know what? This is how I would approach that question. For one, and this may be something you, that, has been discussed or may want to chew on, or maybe you all have conversations about this later. Mm -hmm. Ugo, I honestly don't believe there is such a thing as black on black crime. Um, if you, if you really think about it, I feel like that is something to, how can I put this? People live in, in neighborhoods with people who look like them. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, no matter what race that is, there may be violence in that neighborhood, whatever the race may be. Mm -hmm. I've, I've honestly feel as if black people get a bad rap when it comes to violence. And it's not only us that are hurting each other. All other races, again, this is my opinion, may be hurting each other as well. But for some reason, there's something that says Black people are the only one that's doing that. And it's not true. So if I, I can't answer the question that you have for that. I, I feel like that's maybe something that will be a, a soul-searching moment because I had to have that moment for myself. Um, but I, 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 I think there's just, that's just one of those generic statements that's made about us so many times that even we start to believe it. Um, but again, I, I encourage you to really think deeply about hearing that because you're still going to have to come up with your own um, observation and answer to that question. Yeah. Well, wow, that was all of these questions were so interesting. Thank you to all the teachers and students who replied. And again, thank you so much, Lindsay, for being here with us tonight. This was such a pleasure to get to like meet Zoom <laughs> virtually, whatever is going on here. And one thing that really stuck with me was what you said in the beginning about how 
you're not trying to just make art, but actually capture a story. I think that is so powerful for everybody to take something from, like, how can I capture everyone who I'm encountering? How can I take their story and yeah. take it for what it's worth? Thank you yeah. for that. Thank, thank you for having me. And, you know, um, it is never my, my motive to, how do I put this? take away from anything i want to be able to add i want to be able to give i want to be able to see and provide what i can and i hope that you all took something from today um i really hope so because i took something from you all i i feel like i'm in good hands with the future and you all have provided me with so much hope and so much heart in this evening and i appreciate you all for just being great and definitely for for inviting me i really enjoyed this thank you <laughs> i think caroline is gonna wrap it up but once again thank you from our entire community like this was such an honor to have you to speak with us over zoom not in person of course but <laughs> yeah um so thank you so much again Lindsay, for coming and for dedicating your art and time we all really appreciate it 